back to the channel. This may surprise you, but I am working on my truck. Uh, if you guys have noticed, I have not posted a video in probably six months, but today we got something interesting. I am mounting the MIG tuning uh, eight piece rock light kit on my fifth gen Ram. Uh, before I made this video, I looked around on YouTube to see if anybody else had any tips for mounting these lights in like wiring locations and I couldn't find anything. So I'm gonna show you guys the process I did. Might not be uh, what somebody else would run, but I'm gonna show you guys how I hooked it up and hopefully this helps anyone trying to run rock lights on their fifth gen Ram. All right guys, before I dive into the video, if you're not already following us on Instagram, go ahead and search us on Instagram and search for so fit Gen. If you guys have questions, you can ask us on there. All right, up next is my shop is a mess. Um, if you guys watch some of our older videos, you will see that I used to not have walls. So that's something I've just been working on with any little bit of downtime I had. Uh, I'm slowly getting the walls done. Eventually everything's gonna be color matched like this and there'll be a piece of black trim where these two pieces meet. I'm gonna stain all the headers and it's gonna look great. I got one section over here left to do and uh, that's pretty much it. And you're probably looking at that electrical box like, man, this dude's gonna show me how to wire his truck up and he can't even wire a panel. But uh, don't worry about that. All right, guys, so with the MIG tuning lights on the eight piece sets, you're gonna get four rock lights that are six feet long and four rock lights that are 10 feet long. And I feel like if you had a Jeep Wrangler or something really short wheelbase, it might work. But with the fifth gen Rams, especially the crew cabs, you're gonna need to buy extension wires. Uh, I ended up buying these on Amazon. You get a box of two for $10 but uh, I ordered the wrong ones. These have uh, an extra pin that I don't have. So these are gonna get returned and I'm gonna buy the extra ones, which will be here tomorrow. Um, and you might ask yourself like, well, why don't you just extend the wires yourself? And I thought about it, but these connections are a weatherproof connection and it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. They just screw into the, the module that I have mounted underneath here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what that module looks like and we'll go from there. All right, so currently I'm on the passenger side of my vehicle, and this is where I found best was to mount the controller. Um, I went with the passenger side only because I was gonna be screwing into the Ram box. Uh, the batteries on these trucks are on the driver's side, so I hesitated to mount this control box on the driver's side, but I figured if I'm ever gonna use these Ram boxes, I'll probably use my driver's side one over my passenger side one. But in the end, it worked out pretty good. Um, I was able to get some real flathead screws and mount these things flush inside the ram bin. And the best part about it is the liner still fits in. This thing goes over and your weather tech covers it. So, that's where I ended up mounting the box at. All right, one thing I forgot to show you guys is uh, on the left side of this box is where you have all your, where all eight of your rock lights will thread in. On this right side here, this is where your power comes out. So I zip tied it, there's a hole in the frame here. And then right here, what I did is I just ran a self tapper into the frame. It's kind of hard to see. I got this power temporarily power here but uh, I'm grounded right to the frame. And I also used a waterproof connection and I'll drop that video in of how those work if you're not familiar with them. But basically I have a temporary power wire running all the way to my battery. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what one side looks like. So that's the convenience of these rock light kits. Um, you have a control box that you just have to run power to and you can ground anywhere on your frame. Yeah, if you didn't want to drill the hole in your frame, uh, you could run a negative lead up to your battery. But uh, if you look down where I mounted my ground at, there's already like five holes in the area. I figured what's, what's another eighth inch hole gonna hurt? But uh, the cool part about it is with that, it comes with a remote. So you do not have to run a switch inside your cab to be able to turn these on or off. So, you can turn these things on. Right now they're on green. 
You can change through the settings for any colors that you might want. You can also adjust like uh, how they how they come in and out with uh, like a strobe setting. So right now this is the only side I have done. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep wiring. I'm probably not gonna show too much during the process until I figure it all out. But uh, when I'm all done, I'll show you guys like where exactly I have these mounted at and the way I ran the wires. All right, so a little bit of time has passed. Uh, I had to remove all the eight millimeter bolts that hold in the fender liner in the rear and I had to take off the fender flare um, just so I could drill the holes for the rock lights in the back. So I went with this spacing. Again, you guys can run this however you want, what kind of angles you guys want. Um, one thing I do want to note is when you're mounting this, so visually, if you're looking at it from like inside your fender flare, um, they have a multi-purpose bracket so you can run these wires flat. In this case, I'm going out the back like so. But uh, for visual aesthetics, if you keep it like this, that way you don't see all these extra mounting holes when you look into your fender. But uh, this one's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and mount it back in and figure out where I'm gonna run these wires to that controller. And then we'll be good to go with the rear. Throw this back in. I just wanted to show you, uh, I did use Loctite because I don't ever wanna have to take this liner out again. And what I basically did is I pulled it tight and I zip tied it so they follow the contour of the fender liner. Basically, these are gonna get wired in this direction. Um, when I go ahead and hop over on the other side, I'm gonna show you how to actually remove this. Um, if you haven't taken one of these fender liners out before, it can be kind of tricky. Um, the good part is these things flex pretty good. But when I jump over to that side, I'll show you guys what that looks like from start to finish. All right, so currently it's the next day. Uh, off, off camera, I went ahead and got this side back together. Uh, before I jump over to the other side, I just wanna hit some points here. On the rear fender liners, you do have to take them out because you have no room to work. Uh, up front, I was able to install these lights with um, just removing the air box. That gave me plenty of room to be able to do the work. Uh, it was a little tough underneath the air box tray I had to reach my hand through this gap, but uh, totally doable. So now I'm gonna hop on the other side and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So if you're looking for a good excuse to buy the Milwaukee ratchets, uh, this is it. This, this right here, this is it. Go ahead and order it. It makes your life a lot easier. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these eight millimeter bolts all the way around. Uh, that's gonna drop off, in my case, the fender flares that are on here. And then also I got to take out these two eight millimeter bolts back here. And basically I'm going to slide this thing down and then out and then pull the whole piece out and we'll go ahead and drill the uh, MIG tuning lights in their location. Up next, uh, some other pointers I would like to give you guys is uh, for the templating. Um, you do get these mounts here, but uh, I ended up tracing these on cardboard. It was easier for me to make my Sharpie marks through here because it's a lot thinner of a profile. Uh, I did the same thing for the control module that I have mounted underneath on the ram bin. And also, if your truck was just recently undercoated with fluid film, uh, I would highly recommend to hold off on getting your truck undercoated before you go to do this because I'm finding oil everywhere which 
it's good, but also it's making this real messy. All right, so I went ahead and drilled the driver's side rear fender liner and uh, I'm drilling a 3 8 hole for the uh, connection to get through. And I'm also doing a 5 32nd uh, hole for the studs. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is this has a very small uh, screw head on it. So you might want to add a washer to this, but if you drill your hole small enough and just force these screws through, it gives you plenty of uh, surface area for your, uh, your actual nut to grab on the backside. Went ahead and got everything tightened. Again, keep in mind that when you tighten these, you are tightening into plastic. You're cinching between plastic. So uh, if you feel more comfortable putting a washer here, go ahead and do it. Uh, I found it easier to not add the washer and just use Loctite. That way I can get it snug and I don't have to worry about these getting loose. Uh, up next, um, I'm gonna trim these studs. I found it was easier just to trim them once they're on. I just been using my angle grinder but uh, just be careful that you don't actually cut your wire. All right, we're back in business. Amazon just showed up with the extension wires that I was showing earlier in the video. I got the replacement ones, so we're back in business. Now we have the extension wires to get the driver's side over to the control module on the passenger side. Another thing I wanna mention is these pinouts. Um, even though these are waterproof connections, I have been adding dielectric grease in here. Um, just a, a tad just inside here that way if any any time moisture gets in here uh, It's not going to affect the lighting system because as much effort as it you have to go through to install these uh, I've just peace of mind one and done you can buy this at any any hardware store any automotive store I definitely recommend it Thank you. And then I came over here and I found this uh, great round uh, Shaft here, so I want to run and I wrap my wires around this and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hook them over to the control module. Uh, yeah, let me know if you guys think this will work or not. Uh, I think it looks like a pretty good anchor point right here. All right, so all jokes aside here, um, what I did is I had a piece of Romex laying around and I ran this through the frame bracing uh, and I taped my wires from the driver's side rear up and over and I'm gonna pull these through on the other side. I'll go ahead and show you guys what that looks like real quick. So over here is where the other side comes out at. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these through and get my lights over to the passenger side so I can mount them on the control box. Making a little bit of progress. I just got the lights mounted on the driver's side front fender liner. Um, I did have to drop this liner, so it would be the same process as I showed you on the back. Uh, there's not as much room on the other side with removing the airbox because of the battery tray. Um, it was easier just to pull this liner out. Um, I have my wires here and I was adding the extension wires and there's one thing I wanted to show you guys.
So you can see the difference in these connections. Uh, this one in my left is done correctly. This one here, I actually have to undo and reseat that O-ring. Um, if that O-ring's not seated in there correctly, it'll allow water and moisture to get inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this, and I'm gonna go ahead and start routing these wires across and then back down into the uh, ram bin on the passenger side where I have the control module mounted. All right, uh, quick update. I pulled all these tabs out. Uh, it was a little uh, rough around the master cylinder. I had to use the heat gun and heat some of these tabs up to gain some flexibility. Uh, I went ahead and got both the driver's side front rock lights ran over. I used the uh, pulling line again to pull this wire through. So what I did is I fished that line through, pulled it down. I have everything uh, neatly tied and going down. Um, so now I got to undo this and basically clean up all these wires and start wrapping up this install. Well, that is a wrap on the install, guys. Um, in the end, uh, I'm still happy that I chose the passenger side uh, ram ban um, for the mounting location of that control module. I was able to get everything neatly organized. Uh, I think it turned out very well. And with that being said, let's go ahead and see what these lights look like. So right now I had just have them on a fade, so it's going through all the color cycles. Turn these lights off so you guys can see a little bit better. But that's it. Uh, it was definitely a longer install than I thought it would be. Um, I have uh, rock lights on the fourth gen here, and I don't know if it was just easier or I don't remember it taking so long. But uh, all in all, I would say I have probably 10 hours into this. And that was with me working by myself and not having any other guidelines for tips or tricks. If you guys have any questions or looking to do this to your truck yourself, um, like I said earlier in the beginning, you can message us on Instagram and we'll be happy to help.